Hi, and welcome to this Fornaf coffee break. My name is Peter van Avetlo. I'm a product specialist at Fornaf, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window, and we will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we are going to get data from related business central tables without writing code. We will make this. We've tackled this subject before, back in early 2020, but Fornav has changed and it's probably worth taking a fresh look at the subject. To demonstrate how to do this, we will use the sales template from the Fornav re re report pack. I will add information from the item table to this report. However, you can add uh, related tables to any Fornav report from any extension using the instructions from this coffee break. To demonstrate how to add related tables to a Fornav report layout, I'm going to use these steps. Step one, prerequisites. What do I need to get going? In step two, we will have a look at the records collection. In step three, we will add a new record to the record collection. And in the fourth and final step, I will add the required data to the page. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will be adding related tables to a Fornav report in a Business Central Docker environment with the Business Central 2023 Wave 1 release. I have installed the Universal Code Fornav Customizable Report Pack extension version 7.1, and I have uh, executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on Business Central Cloud. Please ensure you are using Fornav version 6.3 or above. I also have the Fornav Designer uh, installed on my PC. The Fornav Designer can be downloaded from the Fornav website. I can add all my changes straight in the Fornav layout. Modifying the extension is not needed. All I need to do is go to my Fornav standard reports in Business Central and click on the layout I want to change. As it is a template, I can also run the report from the Fornav setup and select design. This will also open the Fornav designer. I will now demonstrate. I can go to Fornav, standard reports, and I want to edit the sales template, which is down here. Click it, it will open the designer. And there it is. Now to add a related table to a Fornav report, I need to add it to the records collection. Let's have a look to see what's there already. There is not much there. I'll explain what, I, what I'm looking at. A report in a, a, a Fornav and a Business Central is made up of sections, uh, data items, which call upon data item tables. So the header calls upon the data item table, sales invoice header, the line calls upon the sales invoice line, the VAT amount line calls upon VAT amount line, clause calls upon the VAT clause, etc. A data item so these items in the data set are uh, tied to a data item section in the layout. The bare data in the table can be called upon in that section, but not necessarily anywhere else. A data record is a JavaScript record, which looks up the data in a table. This means it can be called upon from anywhere in the layout, and also that you can use the JavaScript editor to compare or uh, filter this data with other data items in your report, or even with other data records. I can see that item is nowhere in my layout and it's not in my records. So I would need to add item to my record, which is nice because that's the experiment I'd set up. Now that I know what is in my data set, I can add the data I want. I want to, uh, I, as I said, I wanted to add uh, data from the item table because I want to show 
the item category, the base unit of measure, and the net weight to display it on an invoice. That's data that mostly I need to get from the item table. I'm a bit fudging here because a lot of this data is already on the line. It's a bit difficult because it's so complete. Let's just pretend. So, wait, I'll do again what I did. Uh, in the record collection, I open the record collection, I click add because I want to add a record. And under table, I click the three dots and it opened a prompt where I can select the table I want to add a record to. Now I want to add a record to the item table and I need it to be linked. You can see here, this is all the other relevant things in, uh, in this layout. I need it to be linked to the line because I want each line to have the relevant item information. So I click line here. So this item record will be connected to some information in the line. And now Fornav is smart enough to know that the item number is probably the same as the item number in the sales line. This uh, matches. So, uh, well, this is the, I know this is correct. So this is what I want. And now it has made a nice item for me. It's already given it the, the, the right name because it's basically just the normal item. I, it did not necessarily have to be to uh, a real table. I could also now add a new record. For instance, the language doesn't really matter. And connect it to this item record. So I can connect. I don't necessarily need to connect to... I will remove this because I don't need it. I don't necessarily need to connect to a real data table. I can also connect to one of the data records. So you can connect and connect and connect as long as your memory lasts, basically. Now, I'll click OK. Once I have added related table, I've added it. Now, once I've added this uh, item table record, I can add data from that item table record to my layout. I could just add the, uh, the sections that are already there, but in this case, I want to create a new uh, body section. So I only have to show my data item, little of my item data for item lines. I want it to be here just under the description and I hope that it will plop there and I will give it the name item body so that when it's unclear I will remember what it's there for. Now I want to add these fields I want to add from the item the item the net weight, which is here. I can just drag it in. I can I want to add the item category description. here and I want to add the base unit of measure description and I also want to add captions to each of these because I want to know what I'm looking at so 
E, 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 e. There we are, base unit of measure. And the net weight. Net weight. I'll make these all dark red. White text, because otherwise we can't read it. And now it will give me of an individual item, the net weight, the category description, the unit of uh, the base unit of measure, and it will also give me captions for those fields. Now I'm going to be a bit sneaky because I have already prepared an invoice for this exercise. Posted sales invoice. It's this one. Now this one is for three, for two items, for three lines, two items, and a resource. Mr. Terry Dodds. It's going to be a conference table, eight chairs, and Mr. Dodds, who's going to spend four hours to build the damn things. Now, going back to my layout, the net weight here. Is only going to display the weight of one chair. So that's interesting, but not really relevant for some, for most purposes on this invoice. So I'm also going to, let's see if I'm, I'm, I'm under captions. That's probably not the best place. The field lookups is also not the best place. See, I'm getting lost as well. The net weight. I'm going to be a bit sneaky because I'm going to use the least amount of code I can possibly use because I'm only going to use a single asterisk. And I'm going to add it, I'm going to multiply it right, to the quantity. This will now output the weight of the quantity so I can get the weight of eight chairs as needed. I'm also going to give that the same color and I'm going to make this italicized. Pull this up a bit. Now if I preview this, and that one. If you close, you can see it gives me neatly the net weight. Let's make it bigger because otherwise people can't see it. The net weight for all the items, the category, the base unit of measure. I could uh, like, uh, edit the layout a bit to, to make it more readable, but and it gives me the net weight of more items, but also of poor Terry, his weight his category and his unit of measure. It doesn't really show anything there, but it, it does show the uh, uh, the things and we don't need that because we don't, we, well, we care about Terry's weight, but not in that way. Now what we can do, and this is for a bit of extra credit because I promised you, you wouldn't have to write code and I already broke that promise by making you write an asterisk. I'm gonna show you What's going on? When we made the record for the item, there was already something else filled in, this parent filter. This uh, type equals constant two, means that it only filters where the type is equal to whatever constant two is. Now I know that constant two is an item. So it will only output the stuff where uh, uh, where it is actually concerning an item in the parent filter, so the, uh, uh, the actual line filter. So it looks for the lines where the, uh, uh, the type is an item, and then it will give the values. If the type is not an item in the line, then it will not give values. The explanation is more confusing than the reality. 
but it will still output the section which is a bit ugly because it's empty for for terry now what i'm going to do for my own neatness this is where it is by the way just same I, I clicked on three dots and it gives you this nice little field type constant value to this is already filled in you don't it's usually correct you don't really need to think about it too much what i want to add is that the whole section doesn't show up when the item is not uh, when the uh, uh, line is not about an item to do this i'm going to show output it says now true so it will always show true because it will only show when the output is true and as the output is true, it will always show. I'm going to give it an output that is not always true. And I will essentially do the same, but in JavaScript, the line type is that is the same as the line field options type this is essentially the same as the one we saw before so if the type is the same as item then it will show and if not then it will not show now let's see this here we will use the same one i hope And now Terry does not have this entire red section beneath him, but the other two do. So it works. So in a bit. See, Terry, he does not have that section. And these two, they all have the sections. Right. Let's recap what we did. In our Docker environment of Business Central, we have modified the Fornav layout. We have added a related table to the report and set the data item link properties. We have added a body section to our report so we can display data from the new related table. As a bonus, we set up our new section to only show when the line is of an item type. Thank you for listening to me so far. Let's see if we have any questions. Well, since we have no questions, I'll wrap up this coffee break, but you still have a few minute, more minutes. If you want to know more about Fornap, or if you want to download the Fornap designer and converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornap in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about Fornap on our YouTube channel. If you have any questions about Fornap, please email them to support at fornap.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornaf.com slash coffee break. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.